Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Gulfstream Park here on Saturday. It is the 28th of January, 2023. It's Pegasus Day from Gulfstream, and I'm going to look at all the stakes races on the program, including the Pegasus races. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and I mean it around the world. We have quite a few races to look at, all the stakes races, races 6 and then 8 through 13. 13 make it simple so race 6 and then 8 through 13 let's get to it right now starting off with the sixth race from goldstream it's the la proviante stakes it's a grade three event going for a hundred fifty thousand dollar purse race for phillies mayors four-year-olds and upwards we have a field of eight horses going to the goldstream park turf course the distance of ground of 2400 meters or the distance of ground of one mile and one half on the goldstream park turf course 2,400 meters, one mile, one half. The portable rails are right up 56 feet, so it's the outer portion of the turf course. Um, and something, finally, they figured out the turf course at Goldstream after so many years. The turf course has been playing, looks like it's been playing good. It actually looks like a turf course, and it's, uh, you know, they, they did something They did something very w well uh, at Goldstream. And uh, the, the, the past, this year's meeting, I think, has been one of the better ones you've seen at Goldstream in quite a while. And they, fi they finally found the right um, mixture between turf racing and the torpedo racing. Last year, it was just a little bit too much torpedo racing for me and a lot of other people. But I digress. Let's go to my top selection here in the La Proviante. I'm going to go with the two-horse personal best. Let's go 2-5-6-4 in the Superfecta. 2-5-6-4 Super. Top selection of two-horse personal best. Four-year-old filly by Tappet. Shug McGee, he trains one. Iratis Jr. gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came 26th of December at Goldstream. Mile 16th off the Tapita in the Tropical Park Oaks. And the horse finished third by one three-quarter lengths that day. From wide poetry, he sat back early, a little bit wide, had the lead, and then drifted out of contention late. What can you do? He, she just needs to stay the straight course. She's going to the mile and a, a half today. Shouldn't be a problem. She'll get a good, easy tracking trip. And I think she could jump to a victory facing older horses here today. Two back, she ran the 18th of November at Aqueduct. Mile three, it's on the inner turf course, and in Lance race 90,000. She won by four and three-quarter lengths. And again, she sat back early. You know, she got the lead. She was a little bit out in, in front by a lot, but she still got the job done. A very good race there. Uh, by the way, finding that repo was a little bit difficult. Um, and then prior to that, on the 27th of October at Keeneland, about a mile and eighth in a lounge race, 109,000. First time facing winner. She finished second by length that day. She sat back early. She moved a little bit late, but she still needed something there. And then Kentucky Downs, mile 5, 16th in the main special weight. She won by three and three quarter lengths. And from a wide poster, she stalked. She got the lead, and she took off clear on that quirky turf course. An all-around good race for her refreshing here second off the bench training well pace and park i'm going to use her i think your second likeliest winner here is the five horse ad, ad, adventuring for brad cox and joel rosario hasn't been seen since the cardinal stakes at church over the mile and eighth on their turf course another turf course that really settled tw well towards their end of their meeting there churchill and he finished third by three lengths there and she just needs something more you know i do think the mile and eighth is a little bit too short for her i think a mile and a half is really what she wants to do before that she ran the ep taylor stakes where she finished fifth by one and three quarter lengths and you know she just wasn't handling the quirkiness of that course also grade one race it was a little bit tougher competition there but before then the ladies marathon at kentucky down she won by one and a half lengths and took off clear on the front in a very good race she absolutely loves that kentucky down's turf course she won it on it this year and last year uh well 2022 and 2021 quite nicely coming here today it wouldn't surprise me if she gets good trip and you and wins we're going to use her in the multi-race a pick four begins with this race so i think you should go too deep but to recap my selection for the six from Goldstream, it is the grade three La Proviante. I'm going to take the two-horse personal best as a top selection. Give kudos to the five-horse adventuring. 2-5-6-4 super. 2-5 in your multi-race to the eighth event from Goldstream. The eighth race from Goldstream, it is the Inside Information Stakes. It's a grade two event going for a $200,000 purse. Races for Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses going to the Goldstream Park main track. The distance of ground here of 1,400 meters, if you want to go by that. With the distance of ground of seven furlongs on the Goldstream Park main track. 1,400 meters, seven furlongs here in the Inside Information my top selection, uh, I'm going to go with the number three horse, Colorful Mischief. Let's go 3-1-4-7 in the Superfecta. 3-1-4-7 Super, top selection, three horse, Colorful Mischief. Four-year-old four filly by Into the Mischief. Top Fletcher trains. I read it Jr. gets the mounts. The horse's most recent out came New Year's Eve here at Goldstream. One mile on the Rampart Stakes. And the horse been a second by three and a half lengths that day. She sat back early. You know, she had a little bit of trouble trip at the top of the lane, but she was really, you know, 
gaining late. Hopefully with a better trip, a little bit more into it early on, I think she could get the trip to win here today. Two back, I thought she was facing very tough competition in the Raven run at Keelan. Seven furlongs, 22nd of October. She finished seventh by 18 three quarter lengths that day and just really never showed anything. Um, you know, had to be, you know, I would like to see the horse a little bit more forwardly paced that day. Again, it just wasn't the day to win. And then prior to that, in the grade three dog would have Churchill, seven furlongs, 24th of September. She finished third by six and three quarter lengths. She was with them early on. She just couldn't keep up late. A little bit too fast to that half, I thought. Uh, and then the Lance Ray Saratoga, seven furlongs, 7th of August. She won by a half a length. Coming from a mid pack position or a stock position, she was a little bit wide, but she got the turn of foot nicely to win an all-around good race there and then prior to that first time facing winners first time around two turns only start around two turns actually mile 16th at churchill she finished third by two and a half lengths that day she was very wide and she just couldn't keep up off of that wide trip i like to see her getting around two turns but uh, with a better trip uh better post draw shall i say uh but she's training well at the pletcher winter base at palm beach most recent workout half mile and 50 and one fifth of a second and a four following workout a week prior in 49 flat fourth best workout 42 i think this horse is rearing to go i'm going to use User here. I think the one horse fame for Godolphin and Brad Cox and Florian Giroux is your second likeliest winner. Most recently in the She's All In at Remington, a mile 70 on the 17th of December. She won by six and three quarter lengths and at 60 cents a dollar. Everybody and their mother knew this horse was going to win and she won just that way. She basically stuck. She got the lead and then took off clear. Very good race there. Prior to that at uh, Church uh, Churchill six and a half and the um up to hundred twenty five claimer. She won by one and a quarter lengths and again from a tracking position a little bit wide, but she got the job done quite nicely. She doesn't have a lot of forwardly pace, so if there's a bit of a pace meltdown, I think she could get the uh the good trip to win. I'm gonna use her here in the uh, Rainbow Six that begins with this race. But to recap my selection for the eighth from Goldstream, it is the inside information. Let's take the three horse colorful mischief as a top selection. Give kudos to the one horse famed 3 1 4 7 super 3 1 in your multi race to the ninth race. The ninth race from Goldstream, it is the William L. McKnight Stakes. It's grade three event going for a $200,000 purse. Races for four year olds and upwards. We have an oversubscribed field of 13 horses entered, but only 12 horses could go to the Goldstream Park turf course. The distance of ground here of 2,400 meters, or the distance of ground of one mile and one half on the Goldstream Park turf course. 2,400 meters, one mile, one half here in the McKnight. And uh, this is one of my favorite races. Uh, it was my, one of my dad's favorite races. Sadly, we lost my dad last year, but um, he always used to talk about this race right before Christmas. It was always like that big turf race uh, when it was run at Calder years ago. And, it, and you always used to see good horses running it. And, uh, you know, he always talks. He talked about uh, Precious Passion. I don't know if he won it, but it, the, the way Precious Passion would always open up by a bunch and just, you know, hold on to the victory. Um, I, I, I want to say he did win in 2008 or nine, something like that. But, um, you know, this has always been one of my favorite races uh, and his, too. Uh, my top selection here, I'm going to go with the uh, number seven horse channel maker, an old man here. I'm going to go seven, six, nine, three in the Superfecta. 7693 Super, top selection, seven horse channel maker. Nine year old Gellin by English Channel, Belmont Trains. Tyler Gaffleone gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came to the Breeders' Cup turf at Keeneland, a mile and a half on the 5th of November, and the horse finished 7 by 7 and 3 quarter lengths. The old man just couldn't keep up with the better horses there. He sat with them early on, but then just crumbled. You know, he's just not going to win the Breeders' Cup turf. Stepping down in class to this grade three, it's a tough group of horses, but with a better trip here today, a little bit more forwardly paced, I think he can keep up, and I think he can win here today. Big question is, does he like this turf course? He is 5-0 and on it, but he's made a half million dollars even with not finishing the 1-2-3 on this turf course. Two back in the Sycamore at Keeneland, a mile and a half on the 14th of October. He finished fourth by one and a quarter lengths that day. And again, he just stalked. He couldn't get there late, but he ran his heart out. Uh, and then before then, the sword dancer at Saratoga, a mile and a half, 27th of August. A very tough sword dancer this year. He finished 10th by 16 lengths. He just stalked and then completely crumbled under the pace pressure. It wasn't the day to win. Uh, and then prior to that, a very hot Friday afternoon at Belmont, a mile and a half in the Grand Coutier, uh, the horse went by neck that day. And he, and he held on on the front end. It was a very good race for him there. You know, the Manhattan, he was just facing those grade one quality horses where he couldn't keep up with. Uh, and then before that, won the seasonal reappearance in the Elkhorn at Keeneland very, very nicely. Refreshing here, training well, pace and park. You know, I think this is a good spot to win. And finally, in starts to number six, I think he could break the Golden, Goldstream Park made in this old man. Um, I, I think you're second likely winner here is the six horse 
Temple for Mike Maker and Ty, um, Florent Giroux, another up there in age horse, seven-year-old horse by Temple City. Most recently in the Red Smith at Aqueduct, a mile three-eighths on the 26th of November. He finished 10th by 10 and a half lengths, and he just kind of weakened out of it. That late in the season turf course at Aqueduct can play very weird at times. Horses either handle or don't. I don't think he really was handling it there. Refreshing here to a lot faster turf course. Back to Goldstrom, where he's run very well in the past. I'm going to give him another shot. Two back in the Sycamore at Keeneland over the mile and a half. He finished second by length, and at 23 and a half to one, he closed up from nowhere. I thought it was a very good trip for him to, uh, in defeat there. Uh, and then before then, the turf classic in Kentucky Downs over the mile and a uh, mile and a half. He didn't handle the quirkiness there. He finished 11th by um, uh, 31 and a half lengths, and he just completely hit the wall. It wasn't the day to win. And the UN at Monmouth over the mile three eights. He finished third by one half lengths. He didn't have the best beginnings, but he was closing up well late. He w he was a winner on this turf course last year. He won the McDermott up very nicely in a 100 buyer fashion, uh, taking over at the top of the lane. A very good race. Ran this one last year where he finished second behind Avon, who basically walked in the front end. But I think it's a lot tougher addition this year. He should get a good trip at 9-2. to two. It wouldn't surprise me here. Um, also, the nine horse value engineering. He's stepping up in class, but won the um, the Allen Jerkins over the mile five furlongs on the Tapita very nicely last month. Um, you know, going to a mile and a half shouldn't be a problem. You know, it wouldn't surprise me with the jump in, up in class he wins. And also the three horse Pale Alto for Frankie Detour in Grand Motion. He's making his fifth start stateside. And, uh, you know, he, I, I think he wants to get the mile and a half. I think this might be the fourth or fifth time I, I bet him stateside, by the way. But, um, you know, his North America debut. It wasn't bad at all. He's going to like the firm ground. You know, I'm going to give him a shot here on the ticket at 8-1 because he's a very intriguing horse. If you look at some of the horses he's facing in Europe, uh, those are very tough horses. These are not nearly as tough, and I think he could get a good trip also at 8-1. I think this is the leg of the pick six you, you really want to go a little deep in. So to recount my selection for the ninth from Goldstream, it is the William McKnight Stakes. Let's take as a top selection the seven-horse channel maker. We're going to give kudos to the six-horse Temple, the nine-horse Value Engineering, and the three-horse Palo Alto. Uh, so basically, we'll go 7693 in the Superfecta and 7693 also in the pick six. So let's get to race number 10 now from Goldstream. The 10th race from Goldstream, it is the Fred W. Hooper Stakes. It's a grade three event going for $150,000 purse. Race for four year olds and upwards. We have a field of 13 horses, a baker's dozen going to the Goldstream Park main track, the distance of ground of 1,600 meters or one mile here in the Hooper. 1,600 meters, one mile here in the Hooper. And um, like I said, you have to go a little bit heavy in the previous leg in the pick six. I'm going to single in this leg. I'm going to take the one horse, Miles Z, as a top selection. Let's go 1 9 13 10 in the Superfecta. 1 9 13 10 Super. Top selection of one horse, Miles D. Five year old horse by Curlin. Chad Brown trains. Joel Osario gets the mounts. Um, having a bit of a, you know, a slow Goldstream Park meeting. He's 60 for six at the current meeting. Striking at 10%, but, uh, 10%, but you know, just a little bit slow for him. Him. Um, but uh, Miles D hasn't been seen in 11 months. 11 months prior uh, to today, he ran in the mine shaft at the fairgrounds, mile 16th and uh, 19th of December of 2020, uh, 19th of February of 2022. He finished third by one and by three and three quarter lengths there. Uh, tongue tied um, story of my life. Um, you know, he, he just kind of stalked all the way around the race course a little bit wide, but he just couldn't keep up. I do think he does better with a one turn mile. I think where he could let the horses run in front of him, where he could settle down and he could make that that one run late. I think that's the kind of race he wants to do, and I think that's the kind of trip he could get to win here today. Two back, he ran in the Discovery Stakes of 2021 at Aqueduct, a mile and eight there, and he won by a half a length from a wide post, or he sat back early, stupidly wide throughout, but he had the turn of foot to win there. A 103 career best buyer. That was a very good run there. And then prior to that, 24th of October at Belmont, around the one-turn mile 16th in the lounge race, facing all the horses there. He won by a head. He sat back early. He closed up from nowhere. That was a very good performance. And then the Travers of 2021 at Saratoga over the mile and a quarter. He finished third by five and a half lengths. He was a little bit wide, just not getting the mile and a quarter. The two in front of him, uh, Essential Quality and Midnight Bourbon, are just better horses than him. Um, and then prior to that, in the Curlin at Saratoga, mile and the eighth. He finished second by one and three quarter lengths. A little bit wide, but he, he just couldn't keep up. Dynamic one had the jump on him. But guess what? He likes to one turn um, at Belmont. He won on the 24th of October of 2021 in the mile 16th. And then he won around a one turn mile in his three-year-old 
debut at Belmont in a main special weight. Won by two and a quarter lengths with jo- Joel Rosario up. He circled the field late. That was a very good run. Coming here today, training very well paced. And if you go through all his workout patterns since uh, coming back to the to the workouts in in the late fall, he's really been getting better with every workout. Coming here today at three to one with a good trip from the inside, I think he could get the uh, winning trip to win. I'm going to single him in the pick six. So to recap my selection for the tenth from Goldstream, it is the Fred W. Hooper. Let's take the one horse mile D. Um, let's go one nine thirteen ten in the Superfecta, and we're going to single the one horse Miles D in the multi race. Let's get to the eleventh race from Goldstream. Race number 11 from Goldstream. It is the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mayor Turf Invitational. It's a grade three event going for a $500,000 purse. Race for Phillies and Mayors, four year olds and upwards. We have a field of nine horses going to the Goldstream Park Turf Course, the distance of ground of 1,700 meters, with the distance of ground of a mile and 1 16th on the Goldstream Park Turf Course. 1,700 meters, a mile 1 16th here in the Pegasus Philly and Mayor Turf. My top select, and by the way, the rails are at zero feet, so it's the inner portion of the Goldstream Park turf course. Um, my top selection here, I'm going to take the favorite, Shantisara Shant- 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 as a top selection. I'm going to go 9327 in the Superfecta. 9327 Super. Top selection three was Shantisara. Um, this um, five year old mare by Cloud C here. Chad Brown trains. I read it to Jr. gets the mount. The horse's most recent appearance came the 5th of November here at Keeneland, oh, over at Keeneland. One mile in the fall harvest stakes. Off the long refreshing. He finished, she finished fifth by four and a half lengths that day and just never really got going. Was a little bit wide and, you know, probably need the race. Coming here off a little bit more, a little bit refreshing, not as bad as the uh, as the fall as the fall harvest. Should get a better trip on this turf course and a little bit faster turf course. I think the horse get the job done and win here today from a tracking position. Two back in the Jenny Wiley Keelan, a mile sixteenth, sixteenth of April. She finished second by length that day. She just kind of stalked all the way around the race course. She had a little bit of turn of foot, but just not enough. Uh, Rio Glory, who was the champion uh, of twenty twenty two. Got the job done. This horse also was Van Doss. So just keep that in mind. She just wasn't 100%, 100% sound that day. And then in the QE2 Cup at Keeneland, a mile on the 8th, 16th of October. She won by five. She stalked. She got the lead. She quickened up nicely in the yielding ground. And it was an all-around good race there, earning 100 buyer. And then prior to that, the Jack Club Oaks of 2021 at Belmont. Mile three-eighths in her turf course. She won by a half length, again from a track position. She quickened up nicely. And it was, again, a nice, easy victory. Uh, and then when the puck were up before that, at resting piece, Arlington Park. Coming here today at 9-5, to five, I think she's loaded. She could get, definitely get the job done. The three horse won Conda is your second likeliest winner. She won that full harvest stakes at Keeneland. Very, very nice by three quarters line closing up from a wide poster to win before then the wood t- bind mile she just got beat by better um, horses there, uh, better males. And then before that, in the uh, dance smartly at Woodbine over the mile 16th, she won by one three-quarter lengths, and she got the job done, closing up well from mid-pack. Coming here today on this turf course where she ran well um, in the Honey Fox last year, uh, and she ran this race last year, which ran quite crap, but coming here today, you know, I think she could also get the job done. At 5-1, to one, let's use her in the late pick six, or the rainbow six. But to regain my selection for the 11th from Goldstream, it is the Pegasus World Cup Philly Mayor Turf. Let's take the 9 horse Shantasara as a top selection. Give kudos to the 3 horse Wakanda. 9327 Super. Let's go 9 3 in your multi race to the co feature 12th race now from Goldstream. The 12th race from Goldstream, it is the Pegasus World Cup Turf Invitational. It's a grade one event going for a million dollar purse, races for four year olds and upwards. We have a field of 14 horses entered, but keep in mind, only 12 could go to the Goldstream Park Turf Course, the distance of ground here of 1,800 meters, or the mile and one eighth trip on the Goldstream Park Turf Course. 1,800 meters, one mile one eighth. The portable rails are out 56 feet, so it's the outer portion of the turf course. This is basically, I think 56 feet is basically their main portion of the, of the turf course that they reserve for the, um, you know, the bigger races like the Pegasus race, the McDermott, um, you know, what's the other big turf race, the Pan American, I guess. Um, but um, my top selection here, I'm going to take Hurricane Dream, the four horses, a top selection. Let's go 4, 10, 12, 7 in the Superfecta. 4, 10, 12 7 super top selection of four horse hurricane dream this six-year-old gallon by hurricane cat grand motion trains frankie detori gets the mount the horse's most recent out came the first of october at longchamp a mile and uh, three sixteenths in the group two pre d'olaire and she finished seven by 15 quarter lengths that day and she sat back early and she had no turn of foot the ground was very soft that day which i don't think she really handled i think she's been crying out for firm ground she's finally going to get it today 
um, or he's finally going to get it today. Should get a good tracking trip from the post run, and I think he could get the job done. Two back with Frankie up in Germany on the 4th of September. Bottom, bottom, one mile in the group two. Brenna Ottingen, Renan Stakes, pardon me if my German's horrible. Um, and the horse finished second by a head that day, and he, you know, he, he had a great trip from the back of the back. He closed up well. He just missed. Nothing bad about that race on the fast ground. And then 12th of June at Longchamp on soft ground, a mile and a quarter in the group three pre-la coupe. He finished second by a half a length. And again, he, he stalked. He got the lead. He just couldn't get there late, but he didn't go down without a fight. I thought she, he ran decently there. And then before that, 8th of May at saint Clou in the, in the mile trip in the group two, Sam, in the pre de Mouget, he finished third by one quarter lengths. And again, and he just couldn't keep it up, keep up late. I thought the horse was just a little bit gamer than him there. And then the pre to hard coat at long shot over the mile and a quarter. He finished six by four and three quarter lengths. And he just kind of hit the wall there late. Again, soft ground not to his liking. He wants to firm ground like he saw in Germany. Like he saw at San in 2021 where he basically won for fun. That was probably his career best race there. Um, just go, like I said, go through his form cycles. When he runs on that fast ground, he really puts on the show. His workout patterns have been very quick as recently on the firm ground up. Palm Meadows, a 5 8 mile drill, 58 flat, the best workout 13, and a 5 8 workout before that, Palm Meadows on the lawn, 104 and 3 fifths of a second, breezing, 11th out of 17th best. You know, I think he's rearing to go. I'm going to use him here today. Um, I think your second likeliest winner is a 10-horse Ivar, a horse that's run quite a few triple-digit buyers, mostly triple-digit digit buyers. Javier Castellanos on this one for Paulo Lobo. Most recently in the Brewers Cup mile at Keelan. He finished fourth by length earning a 103 buyer in the defeat. He really closed up well getting a, a decent trip but he still had to split a few more horses late. But nothing bad about that race. Before then the Keelan turf mile Keelan over the mile. He finished second by one and a half lengths. Again really closing up well but just a little bit too late a 101 buyer there. And then the Woodbine mile and a 103 buyer in defeat. He finished second by five and a half lengths. Modern Games had the jump on him. This horse was stupidly wide, had the inside-out horses, but it was just a little bit too late there and a little bit too troubled trip. And then won the seasonal appearance at Indiana going a mile 16th very nicely. Only a 99 buyer, but he still won quite nicely. Um, you know, the, the last time he won with a triple-digit buyer, you have to go all the way back to October 2020 at Keeneland um, in in the uh, in the Shadowell Turf Mile where he won by a length, closing up from nowhere from a wide poster. A 104 buyer that day. That was a very good run. That's the last victory with a, with a triple-digit buyer. Everything after that has been basically triple digit in defeat where he runs these massive races just not winning he's training well at the Thurber training center at five to two it wouldn't surprise me if he gets the job done i definitely using your um pick six but to recap my selection for the 12th from goldstream it is the pegasus world cup turf as a top selection we're going to take the four horse hurricane dream give kudos to the 10 horse ivar 4 10 12 7 super 4 10 in the pick six let's get to the nightcap the featured 13th race from goldstream the nightcap, the 13th race from Goldstream. It is the Pegasus World Cup. It's a grade one event going for a $3 million purse. Races for four-year-olds and upwards. We have 14 horses entered, uh, but only 12 go to the Goldstream Park main track. The distance of ground here of 1,800 meters, if you want to go by that, or one lap around the Goldstream Park main track, which is 1,800 meters in circumference, or mile eighth on the Goldstream Park main track. One mile, one eighth, one lap around. And personally... You know, I would run this race at about a mile three sixteenths, only because the run to the first turn for these mile and the eighth races at Goldstream is very quick. Even with the mile three sixteenths, it would be also. But um, you know, I, I think that's something they might have to look into the next few years because since they did the reconstruction of Goldstream Park in two thousand five, post like eight through twelve, eight through fourteen, whatever. Um, have horrible, horrible, you know, stats. Horrible. It's it's incredible. I think a handful of horses, if that, have won from, like, eight out. Um, I know Big Brown was one of them. I think Gunrunner was one of them, and that's about it um, that, I could, that I remember. And they're, you know, it's just very hard to win from wide posters going mile and eighth here at Goldstream. With that being said, I'm going to take a horse from post number seven, the seven-horse Skippy Lawn Stocking as a top selection. Let's go 7-10-1-6 in the Superfecta. 7-10-1-6 Super, top selection, seven-horse Skippy Lawn Stocking, four a by Exaggerator, Safi Joseph Jr. Trains, Jose Ortiz gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came New Year's Eve at Goldstream, a mile 116th in Harlan's Holiday, and the horse went by two lengths that day. From a, out of the gate from a wide poster, he stalked a little bit wide throughout, but he stalked, he got a good turn of foot in the top of the lane, quick enough nicely with the short stretch, and he got the job done going away clear. Off the bench, I thought it was a very good race. 
coming here with a good poster. It could be forwardly paced from this post, which I like, on the home track. I think he can improve off that run, and I think he really won a good race here today. Two back, he ran the Pennsylvania Derby at Parks, a mile and 8th on the 24th of September. He finished ninth by 15 three quarter lengths that day. He was very wide throughout, and he just never really got going. I do think he was a little bit farther out, and I also think think he does his better running style when he's a little bit closer to the pace. I think Jose will take him closer to the pace, and I think that's going to be the key for his victory today. Two back ran the West Virginia Derby at Mountaineer on the slop. Mile and eighth on the 6th of August. A lesser quality of horses, but he was a little bit closer, which I liked from Y post draw. He stalked, got the lead, quickened up nicely. A 102 buyer, best to that point. A very good race there. Um, and then prior to that, in the Belmont Stakes at Belmont, a mile and a half, 11th of June, he finished third by six and a quarter lengths. Mo Donegal and, and Nest, who were in front of him, really ran better races than him. But he stalked, you know, he, he stayed the trip well. I didn't think it was a half bad race in defeat. And then before that, in the Preakness, he finished fifth by seven and a half lengths that day. It was a little bit wide, but early voting won it on the front end. This horse just wasn't getting to him. Uh, and then before then, the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct, a mile and eighth. He finished third by three and three quarter lengths that day. And he just couldn't keep up. Mo Donegal had the jump on him. Early voting had a good race on the front end this horse was definitely third best and then over the mile and eighth here at goldstream uh in march in an optional 75 claimer they always run that mile and the eighth race for three-year-olds in early march at goldstream that that that, that allowance race i love those races and this horse won it by three and three quarter lengths and he, he sat back early circling the field nicely late and he got the job done he likes his track he's training well palm meadows his form has been very good as of recently i'm gonna give him a shot here at five to one the 10 horse cyber knife is your second likely winner but he's gonna have to overcome the Y post draw. Brad Cox trains. Florian Giroux gets on this four year old cult by Gunrunner. His dad won this race from this Y post draw. Um, most recently, ran the horse in a keen and a mile in the keen and the Bruce Cup dirt mile, where he finished second by head that day. He sat back girly from Y post draw. He had the lead. Cody's wish got to him, but he ran his heart out there. Before then, the Pennsylvania Derby, he closed up a little bit late, but Tabby on the Zandon had the jump. Uh, and then before that, in the uh, Travers at Saratoga over the mile quarter, he finished second by five and a quarter lengths that day. And he just got beat by incredible horse epicenter but i thought his best race of lifetime was definitely that haskell at monmouth over the mile and the eighth winning by head coming up the rail had money on him that day and he you know and he got the job done a very very good good race there and then before that when the mat went quite nicely his derby you know he he just couldn't keep up from that wide poster had never a good start um and then the arkansas derby he won but i don't think he was as experienced there yet it was a very subpar uh, arkansas derby in 2022 but coming here today off some decent races and some decent work at Fairground, I think he could also win a 5-2. We're going to use him on the ticket. And the one-horse proxy, most recently in the Clark, he won quite nicely by three-quarters length, even though he drifted late uh, off the bench uh, there. And then before then, the Stephen Foster, he finished third by five lengths, and he just couldn't catch him on Olympiad American Revolution. He was just a little bit too far out of, out of it. But I like to see him sit a little closer like he did in the Clark. Coming here to Goldstream, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets the job then at 9-2. to I definitely use the picks extended off but to recap my selection for the 13th from goldstream it is the pegasus world cup as a top selection here we're going to go take the seven horse skippy lawn stocking give kudos to the 10 horse cyber knife and the one horse proxy 7 10 1 6 super 7 10 1 to end off the pick six so good luck to all and please follow me on twitter at horse racing kid 5 good luck everybody